So ideology has its, you have a belief, you have a set of, this is the way the world is. And in America, for example, you know, you have Republican and Democrats kind of views of the world. And then you have some reason why you're not able to fully actualize the ideological vision. And this then becomes down to having an enemy, right? So ideology is inherently connected with scapegoating mechanisms. You need a reason for why it's not working. So you can point to some group and say, if only we could get rid of them, then everything would be fine, right? So that's a scapegoat. Now, the second, the next uh, term, I think there's gonna be three technical terms here, jouissance, ideology, and what's called objet petit a, right? A small object A. And I might just talk about object A, but it's objet petit a is the technical term. Um, one of the real contributions of Slavio Šizek's work in political theory was to show that ideology requires uh, an objet petit a, right? And, and that's how it functions. And this is a term that comes from Lacan, and it's Lacan's greatest contribution to the intellectual field. In his own thoughts as well, is the, this, this notion of objet petit a. It's a very difficult notion. Um, I'm just going to give again a very brief summary of what it means uh, in context of what I'm talking about. Please bear with me. Once I've got all of these technical terms out of the way, we'll get to some examples, and then hopefully something that you can apply to your life. Um, so objet petit a can, is often described as the object cause of desire. So there are objects that you desire. You might desire a meal, you might desire to go out with friends, watch a movie. So there's things that you desire. But there's also what causes that desire, what evokes that desire. And you can think about it in a very simple sense of in which when you fall out of love, when you lose somebody you love, you don't just lose an object that you desire, something that you desire. You can lose the ability to desire anything, right? So it's not just that there's 10 things in the world that you desire and then you've lost one, right? You can lose things that you desire all the time, but whenever you lose this person that you love, what you might experience is the loss of desire as such. You no longer desire any of the other things that once gave you pleasure. Uh, you haven't lost them, right? Maybe you enjoyed uh, nature going out walking in forests and suddenly you don't enjoy that it hasn't been taken away from you but the object cause has been taken away from you the thing that caused this to be desirable now what Shizek shows I think very very profoundly especially in his book uh, the sublime object of ideology is that ideology requires an object a so ideology is a system you go like this is the way the world should be whether it's progressivism or conservatism whatever you've got a, a idea of the way the world should be. You have then some antagonisms. So you have an enemy, a scapegoat, that is the reason why your, your world is not uh, an organic whole. And that exception, that problem, that is your object A. Now, I'm going to use a few examples. So in fascism, uh, it's, it's easiest to see. We can say, well, the object A of the fascist is the figure of the Jew. So the fascist has a vision of an organic society where everything works together for the good. Uh, the folk all work together selflessly for one another, industry, government, uh, the, the, the workers, all kind of in this, in this kind of har harmonious, non-technological worldview, right? So, the, so a technological worldview being a, a worldview which reduces people to machines, mechanisms, right? So if you read Mein Kampf, Hitler is always talking about this organic whole, and then he talks about a virus, right? Some exception that is stopping the system from working as a whole, and it is this figure of the Jew. Now, it's not concrete empirical Jews, so the, the Nazis would attack individual Jews, right? But because you'll always find in any group people you can attack, right? So if, you're, if you've got this idea of the Jews are the ones who are in control of everything and they have political power and, and govern, uh, they've got power in terms of um, financial institutions and all of these ideas, well, of course, you're going to be able to find individuals to attack. The figure of the Jew is not the empirical Jewish community. It's this 
phantasmic image that is required in order to sustain the ideological edifice. And it sustains the ideological edifice precisely by uh, making it desirable because you go, oh, it's not really possible, right? That, you know, it's not possible because of this community. We get rid of them and everything will be great. Well, the truth is if you got rid of that community, everything wouldn't be great. You'd realize that that's just a symptom of something that is a problem within the system itself.